Hello friends, welcome back to my show. Tonight we are going to start on a myth-busting mission. And before we embark on this mission, we need to gather some facts. Let me start by saying that I'm aware of the fact that by debunking a myth, we are going to create a gap in our mind. We have been believing in some sort of a myth on some particular topic for so long that it has embedded itself and made itself a part of our mind and mental process. And therefore, if we are going to bust that myth, we must fill it with that particular gap with factual alternative. And this video is a step in that direction. This is Tony Goldberg. He is an epidemiologist at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And his research focuses on ecology, epidemiology, and the evolution of infectious diseases. He combines field and laboratory studies to understand how viruses are transmitted among people over time. And what he has to say will really surprise you. He says that if viruses were to suddenly disappear, the world would be a wonderful place for just a day and a half. And then we would all die. That is the bottom line. In other words, he is trying to tell us that we owe our survival as a species to viruses. And without them, we would be dead. To be precise, in just a day and a half. All of us are hungry for knowledge and information. And we routinely use the media as a source to feed our curiosity. Most of us inform ourselves through television. And this particular medium has experts on current affairs. One day the same person is an expert on defense, the next day on medicine, and the following day on current affairs, sociology, and you name the field, and they'll be able to rattle off figures and act as experts. Here is one example from CNN. For your information, CNN became the top channel in terms of viewership way back in 2020 December. During the time when swine flu was ravaging the world, this is what they had to say. It said it can ravage the lungs, spread through respiratory systems, cause lesions, doesn't stay in the head like a seasonal flu, and finally, look at what it has to say. Survivors of 1918 flu are immune. Now tell me how many survivors of 1918 would be around a hundred years later. Okay, we can take that with a pinch of salt. But then, this news item was based on an animal study which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. That animal was a laboratory ferret. It's not a domesticated animal or not a very popular pet animal either. But this was the basis of the news which was broadcast on a channel which is having the largest viewership in the world. The first thing we must understand is that viruses are not living entities. They are simply passive objects. The second thing is that viruses don't do anything. And the third thing is that they are completely at the mercy of their environment. So the next question we can ask is, what are viruses? And here is what Gustavo Caetano Anoles of the University of Illinois has to tell us. He says that viruses are similar to seeds. And we shall explore this a little further. What the learned professor we saw in the previous slide means is that without the right environment, a virus cannot act. So first of all, let us be clear about one thing. Living things do seven things. The first thing living things do is that they maintain homeostasis. What this technical term means is that it can control its environment within itself. For example, internal temperature, internal contents. Viruses, as we know today, do not have nuclei, organelles, or cytoplasm like cells. 
so they have no way to monitor or create changes in their internal environment on this count it simply fails the test or definition of a living entity the second thing that living entities exhibit are that they have different levels of organization or an hierarchy in their structure now life is a complicated idea and living organisms reflect that complexity in their structure viruses have genes which means they have building blocks which can enter into a more complex association with each other and create a larger entity on this count it gets a positive score all of us would agree that living things are able to reproduce and viruses definitely multiply but they don't have the tools to copy their genes much less create a whole new viron but they work in a different way they can use the cellular equipment of the host where they take residence to reproduce that is a big difference and on this count if we have to say that whether they are living or not living creatures all we can say is maybe this is what the current science has to say about this particular aspect the fourth point is that living things grow you will be surprised to know that viruses do not grow they neither increase in size nor in complexity throughout their existence so it fails on this count too the fifth point is that living things use energy and viruses can do this only by latching on to the metabolism of the host they are like vampires and the current scientific understanding says i don't know the sixth point is that living entities respond to stimuli you will be surprised to know that there is not enough research to definitively say that viruses do or do not respond to anything once again what we get is a big question mark maybe unknown entity or a simple i don't know the seventh and last point is about adaptation to environment adaptation and evolution happen through unintentional changes and that is what we call mutations it does get a positive score on this count because viruses do mutate they evolve but then so do a lot of non living or tangible things for example ideas ideas evolve too they adapt unintentionally to changes in environment as a matter of fact even robots evolve and they mutate on this count of course we can give it a firm thumbs up or a tick in the box let us now summarize those seven points with regard to viruses we find that we only get an affirmative tick in the box in two out of the seven criteria in the remaining cases we have two which are definitely knows and three areas which are unknown or maybe just a guess in the dark or simple ignorance so two out of seven to state that viruses are living entities in order to get a handle on any new concept we need a visual image in the next video we shall be talking about what viruses really look like and how true are those images that we see in magazines on tv screens and in our computer searches so let us summarize some of the myths that we busted our question is can we kill a virus first of all we must realize that that which is unborn or dead cannot be killed only a living entity will die 
The second thing is that viruses are not made out of cells. The third point is that they cannot maintain or remain in a stable, stable state. For the simple reason, they have no capability of maintaining homeostasis as we saw. Again, they don't grow like living entities. And finally, they can't make their own energy. So viruses are not really live things. So they cannot be killed. We'll be talking more about things in greater detail in the videos that will follow. But for tonight, just absorb this. You are about to remove a big myth out of your mind. And I don't want to leave you unattended because you will need to fill up that gap with factual information. So thank you very much for your attention and we shall meet once again in the next video that will follow shortly. Thank you and bye-bye.